In 1985, the Topps Trading Card Company released a series of trading cards called the Garbage Pail Kids. They were originally a spoof of the Cabbage Patch Kids popularity, and the cards themselves were vulgar and disgusting, depicting gross scenarios often involving snot, vomit, pus, and other grotesque mutilations. School teachers and parents hated them, so naturally kids loved them and the trading cards became very popular. So what to do with a series of revolting trading cards? Well, you turn them into a movie, of course. Where released in 1987, we got the abomination that is the Garbage Pail Kids movie, where we learn that the hideous kids seen on the cards are in fact, um, experts in making 1980s fashion designer clothes where we find out of the Garbage Pail Kids' origins, where we learn that they are, um, aliens who fly around in a Garbage Pail spaceship? Who are held captive in their pail by, um, an antique store owner called Captain Manzini? Whose store, by the way, has a painting whose eyes literally come to life because, you know, that makes sense. Where the Garbage Pail Kids get released by a boy called Dodger, who repeatedly gets bullied by, um, a bunch of funky 30-something year olds? The Garbage Pail Kids agree to help Dodger impress his crushed tangerine by making a heap of clothes for her to sell and even start a fashion label because, you know, that's what you think when you think Garbage Pail Kids. Where we learn that the Garbage Pail Kids have to be aware of... Um, the state home for the ugly? Which even has prisoners including... Uh, Santa Claus and Gandhi? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, this is one strange movie, and by all accounts and purposes is also a very bad movie. But heck, you can't talk about good movies all the time, so today we are going to punish our senses with 10 things that you didn't know about the Garbage Pail Kids movie. Which, by the way, this totally isn't a kids video. <laughs> yeah, everyone get that? This video is not aimed at kids. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> YouTube is weird. Number 10, one of two movies based on trading cards. It's common knowledge that The Garbage Pail Kids, with all its awful splendour, is actually the first movie to be based off a series of trading cards. Heck, the movie even starts off by saying it's a Topps Chewing Gum production. Um, which is interesting. Not often you get told that your movie has been produced by Bubblegum, so there you go. I mean, don't get me wrong, there have been trading cards based off movies, but Garbage Pail Kids was revolutionary in that it was a movie based off trading cards. I wanted to look deeper to learn more about movies based on trading cards, to see what legacy the Garbage Pail Kids movie started, only to learn there was only one other movie based on trading cards, and that was the 1996 Tim Burton movie Mars Attacks, which was also owned by the Topps Chewing Gum Company. And although some people have issues with that movie, at least they got it right and captured the surreal manic intensity of the cards and didn't have the Martians making, you know, designer clothes or anything. I also love what Wikipedia says when you try to look up movies based on trading cards, where it says this category should be empty. Like it's saying, come on guys, I know I'm Wikipedia and all, but seriously, let's not make this a thing. Number 9, The Garbage Pail Kids Movie was going to be a horror movie. Yes, before it became a mushy family movie that was oddly trying to tug at the heartstrings because, you know, Garbage Pail Kids, at one stage the movie was going to be a horror film where green radioactive slime makes its way to a garbage bin full of broken toys and dolls to which the Garbage Pail Kids are formed and become insane murdering serial killers. An awesome idea! Are you kidding me? They actually chose the designer clothes plot over the gang of mutated killer dolls? 
Keep in mind, the Garbage Pail Kids movie came out one year before Child's Play. Only the Garbage Pail Kids would have had a group of killer dolls, not just one. And considering what a hit Child's Play was, then the Garbage Pail Kids movie no doubt would have been a hit embraced by horror fans. Heck, Maybe Chucky may not have even been a thing had the Garbage Pail Kids been a horror movie. Also, just look at these cards. Seriously, look at them. Tell me these cards don't look more suited to being a horror movie. The cards themselves were pretty horrific. So I just can't believe that they ditched the horror aspect in favour of being whimsical. Number 8, The Unfortunate Actors. So what about the actors who starred in the movie and what subsequently happened to their careers after contributing to what is considered one of the worst movies of all time? Well, main character Dodger was played by 14-year-old Mackenzie Aston, who is the son of John Aston and the brother of Goonie, Sean Aston. Mackenzie explains that his dad, John, knew that the movie would be a disaster and tried to convince him not to do it, but the contract had already been signed. The irony is, is that very same year John Aston starred in Teen Wolf 2, which was being distributed by Atlantic Entertainment Group, which also distributed the Garbage Pail Kids movie. The moral of the story is 1987 was not a good year if you're an Aston. That and the Astons should probably stay away from Atlantic Entertainment Group. Mackenzie would go on to have bit roles in movies, as well as starring in movies that weren't so mainstream, but his career sadly never really took off. But he seems like a pretty cool guy now and full of many interesting stories about the time he worked on the Garbage Pail Kids movie. British songwriter Anthony Newley starred in the role of the Obi-Wan Kenobi-ish mentor Captain Manzini. Although he starred in many movies like Doctor Doolittle, Newley is more famous for his contributions to music, having written the James Bond song Goldfinger as well as some of the songs for Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Sadly, his career also dwindled after the Garbage Pail Kids movie. He ended up getting a job acting in British sitcom drama EastEnders, where he was set to be a regular on the show, but had to pull out due to bad health, where he sadly passed away in 1999. Say what you want to say about the Garbage Pail Kids movie, Newly put a lot of heart and kindness into the movie. It's just that, well, really he was in the wrong movie. Lastly, Katie Barberry played the manipulative Tangerine. Barberry already had an extensive career working in television, as well as briefly appearing in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. However, it's been stated that the negativity of the Garbage Pail Kids movie killed her career dead in its tracks. Which, once again, I think is a bit of a shame, as the actors surprisingly do an okay job with what they are given. And I think it's a shame that thanks to the Garbage Pail Kids, they never really got the opportunities to further their careers. Number 7, the Garbage Pail Kids costumes were a nightmare. Rather than going for animatronic creatures, which was popular at the time thanks to movies like Gremlins, it was decided to cast the Garbage Pail Kids with little people in costumes, wearing latex and foam heads, which could also be operated to function by animatronic puppeteers who were off screen. Which actually could have worked, I mean after all, look at Hoggle from Labyrinth. However, the Garbage Pail Kids just didn't look right. Thanks to the movie's budget, each character only had one mask, and if anything was to happen to the mask, the production would have to be shut down. Also, supposedly, because there was only one mask per character, in some scenes, if you look closely, you can see wear and tear showing up on the masks. The actors who performed as the Garbage Pail Kids could only wear the masks for a short period of time until they ran out of oxygen. Kevin Thompson, who played Ali Gator, also claims that there was also issues with fumes while wearing the masks too, as they were constantly requiring paint retouches. He also stated that because there was only one mask per character, they had to be durable, and thus simply being durable instantly meant that it was not going to look very good, as opposed to looking like something more creative. What didn't really help is that the scenes with the Garbage Pail Kids weren't filmed on studio sound stages, but in a real warehouse. And the performers playing the Garbage Pail Kids would often be walking into walls. And the metal roof of the warehouse messed around with the mask's controls. So all of a sudden their eyes could start spinning around like they were possessed. Not to mention working in the warehouse was very hot, with water and toilet facility issues. In fact, the actor who played Greaser Greg, Peter Fondacaro, bailed on the project to star in Willow instead, and sent his brother to the Garbage Pail Kids movie production to be his replacement. Which, yeah, the production weren't apparently too happy with. 
Can we seriously though just take a moment to appreciate the actors who had to perform as the Garbage Pail Kids and all they had to endure to bring them to life? Whew. Number 6. The LA Opening Day Was Abysmal Going back to Mackenzie Aston, who played Dodger, he claimed that when the movie came out, it was so poorly received and hated that he attended the LA screening of the movie on its opening day to reveal that only eight other people went to see it. Yeah, just eight. Kevin Thompson, who as mentioned played Alligator, claims that he felt that the movie suffered because although parents could easily give their children 25 cents to get a packet of Garbage Pail Kids trading cards, actually taking them to a movie theater to see the movie was a different story, as it was not something that parents wanted to do, on the account that at the time the Garbage Pail Kids trading cards were universally hated by parents. Aston also shares some of his own insights as to why the movie tanked and put it down to the writing and an example he uses is a scene where the bullies are chasing the Dodger character in order to steal his money. Aston asks why would drug dealers chase down a kid to steal his money in broad daylight out in the open in a public place? I also find it interesting that he called the bullies drug dealers. It makes me wonder if in the original script if they had been more explicitly described as being drug dealers. Whereas in the movie they're just sort of douchebag bullies. Number 5. Real Life Behind the Scenes Romance One thing that always gets put into question when it comes to the Garbage Pail Kids movie is the sort of love affair going on between the Tangerine and Dodger characters on the account that her character does seem to be much older than his. When watching as a kid, I always got the feeling that she was 18 or 19 and Dodger was 13, which, yeah, does make it weird. However, in reality, Katie Barberry is only one year older than Mackenzie Aston, and at the time of filming, she would have been 15 and Aston would have been 14. In fact, they were supposedly dating in real life at the time of making The Garbage Pail Kids. But it was also round about the time of filming The Garbage Pail Kids that they also broke up. I guess having to deal with those annoying mutants who come from the bin will take its toll on any relationship. Number four, unused movie posters. The movie poster used to promote the Garbage Pail Kids is actually pretty good, all things considering. It's nicely drawn and captures that 1980s fantasy vibe perfectly, as we see Dodger on the ground looking in fear as the Garbage Pail dickheads are about to be unleashed from the pail. However, this early poster had more of a cheap quality about it. For a start, I don't like the change in logo design as we see a faceless pale kid come out of a hole in the pail, looking like he's about to bang his head on the way out. Seriously, this poster reminds me of that stormtrooper who bangs his head in Star Wars. Yeah, it looks kind of goofy. We can also see in countries outside America that the movie was in fact called The Garbage Gang, which doesn't sound quite right to me. But what really piques my interest is this horrific unused poster design, where we see a heap of horrifically mutated garbage pail kids splattering out of their garbage pail. This makes me wonder if this poster was designed when the project was going to be a horror movie. After all, this poster goes with the whole toxic waste entering a bin of creepy broken dolls and bringing them back to life. Number 3. Scrap Sequels and Reboots While making the Garbage Pail Kids movie, there was always the possibility that if the movie was a big hit, sequels would ensue, as was the case with previous Atlantic Entertainment Group movie, Teen Wolf. However, after the movie's box office chastising, any chance of a sequel ever happening was scrapped. Jump to 2007 and former Disney chairman Michael Eisner bought the Topps Trading Card Company, along with all their properties, which of course included the Garbage Pail Kids. And in 2012, he announced plans to make a new live-action adaptation of everyone's favourite gross out cards. However, his plans were eventually scrapped. Probably due to the notorious negativity associated with the first theatrical attempt of the Garbage Pail Kids. Point is, maybe the Garbage Pail Kids should stay as trading cards and not be converted into movies. Number 2. Negative Reception Oh boy, there was no love for the Garbage Pail Kids movie when it came out. It was pretty much universally hated. Even the Garbage Pail Kids creator, John Pound, didn't have his name attached to the movie's credits. 
The movie only made just 661,000 on its opening weekend, and All Up only made $1.6 million at the box office, which was much lower than anticipated. Garbage Pail Kids Trading Cards consultant Mark Newgarden said that the movie did far worse than he could ever anticipate, and that it was so bad, children had lost interest in the trading cards and that sales were down. The movie got trashed by critics and thrown into its own garbage pail, where it would go on to win several Razzies, including a Worst Picture Award for the Stinkers Bad Movie Awards. Not only was the Garbage Pail Kids movie the kiss of death to all the actors starring in the film, along with the franchise itself, but sadly its toll did not end there. Number 1. The Garbage Pail Kids movie ended its director's career When the Garbage Pail Kids movie was going to be a horror film as mentioned, it had Troll and Friday the 13th Part 7 director, John Carl Butler at the helm. But when the horror aspect was scrapped, instead director Rod Amato took to the pail, acting as not only the movie's director, but also writer and producer. So the Garbage Pail Kids movie was definitely his baby, and needless to say, he never directed a movie again. Amato had an accomplished career, having directed TV episodes of Mr. Ed and the Dukes of Hazard, as well as some comedy movies. And to be fair, he did have the very difficult task of transforming random trading cards into a story, let alone a movie. And thus the Garbage Pail Kids movie came out and was the disaster that it was, and he never directed again. However, the following year in 1988, a comedy movie called Sunset starring Bruce Willis came out, which was based on an unpublished novel that Amato had written. And although that movie still didn't do all that well, it was still a much better movie to end his career on than the Garbage Pail Kids movie, as it was after his experience in making the Garbage Pail Kids movie that he never worked again, right up until his death in 2003. But you know what? All bitching aside, the Garbage Pail Kids movie is still kind of awesome. I can't explain it, but as awful as it is, it still has a certain appeal about it. And dare I say it, I even get enjoyment when I watch it. So could this be me viewing the movie through nostalgic lenses? Or does the movie just tap into kids when they reach a certain age where gross stuff is awesome, and thus that enjoyment that you get from it when you're a kid transcends into adulthood? Because I know that I'm not the only one who says that. Anyway, you be the judge. Garbage Pail Kids is one of those it's so bad you have to see it for yourself types of movies. But it has become a classic cult film thanks to kids who watched it at the time who have grown up with an obscure, nostalgic love for the movie. And I'll admit it, the first time I saw the film, I thought it was great. It's like a time capsule of our past where logic and common sense don't really matter, where it's all about keeping us entertained with weird costumes and crude humour. And every now and then, kids like me like to go back to the pale to relive our childhoods. Anyway, I'm Minty, and if anyone else ever does make another Garbage Pale Kids, please make it a horror movie, as that would be awesome. See ya!